Welcome to the Words to Empower podcast, featuring Bishop Frank Stewart, pastor of the Acts Ministry in Conway and North Little Rock, and now, Pastor Stewart. Welcome back to the Acts Ministry broadcast. So glad that you joined us again. We're now in the book of Daniel. Daniel. And Daniel is a very valuable book, very vital book, especially in the day and time that we live. It is end time. It is rapture season. We're going to study some things in Daniel. We have to study very closely because there are some things that are happening in the book of Daniel that agrees with the book of Revelation and kind of sandwiches the church in between. There are some things also in the book of Daniel that we saw even in the book of Genesis, and we're going to talk about that. First, I want to start in Daniel chapter 1, and we want to talk about in the third year of the reign of Jehoiakim, king of Judah, came Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, unto Jerusalem, and besieged it. And the Lord gave Jehoiakim, king of Judah, into his hand with part of the vessels of the house of God, which he carried into the land of Shinar, to the house of his God, and he brought the vessels into the treasure house of his God. Now, this is just starting the book of Daniel, but when you start there, there's a word here. It's called Shinar, Shinar, in the book here of Daniel. Now, let me read a passage of scripture that is found in the book of Genesis. And in the book of Genesis, there is a scripture that is given unto us that you would probably think is very, very familiar to what we just read, the land of Shinar, the land of Shinar. And you're like, where is the land of Shinar? It is a place that is pretty infamous in history. The Bible says this. Now, I want to make the connection between Daniel, Genesis, and Revelation. Daniel talks about this one world government. He, he talks about what the king of Babylon did and bring them into the land of Shinar. Now, in Genesis chapter 11, verse 1, it says, And the whole earth was of one language and of one speech. And it came to pass as they journeyed from the east, and they found a plain in the land of Shinar. Shinar. See, you see it here in the book of Genesis. And this is, this is synonymous with Babylon. Babylon. So we see Babylon that is mentioned many times in the book of Daniel because in the book of Daniel, uh, they're in the land of the Babylonians. They have been transported there, captured as young men and made eunuchs out of, and they're now in Babylon. But it just doesn't stop there. There's another passage of scripture that I want you to be aware of, and that is in the book of Revelation, chapter 18, verse 1 and 2. It says, And after these things I saw another angel come down from heaven, having great power, and the earth was lighted with his glory. And he cried mightily with a strong voice, saying, Babylon, the great is fallen, and it become the habitation of devils, and the whole of every foul bird, and a cage of every unclean and hateful bird. So you notice in all three incidents, Daniel chapter 1, and then we went to Genesis chapter 11, you notice this place, Shinar. And this is the place where Babylon was located. And then when we get to the book of Revelation, it says Babylon the Great has fallen, has fallen. So it connects from Genesis to Revelation and with Daniel being the centerpiece. So there is a connection here. We see the prophecy unfolding, being revealed. You'd have to be blind not to see it. So here's Daniel transported. Daniel and his three friends, his three friends that was transported from Judah to the kingdom of the Babylonians. It was uh, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah. These three, we call them the Hebrew boys, of course. We know them as, we know them in a different name, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, which were not their original names. It did not speak to their destiny. So we see these, these three, three young men being taken into the country of the Babylonians. And they stripped them. They stripped them physically, 
strip them emotionally because it's trying to break their will, trying to get them to give up. And if they got them to give up, all would be over. They're trying to, they're trying to break their will. So, so here they are in the land of Babylon. And they're here because of what God had declared in the book of Deuteronomy, we know, and also in the book of Exodus, that he had said to them that if they would not obey, if they wouldn't do right, then he would scatter them all over uh, the earth. So we know that. So they're here because of their misconduct. And God promised through the prophet Moses that if this happened, they would have to suffer the consequences. And so it did. It happened. So now they, they have these three young men, four young men with Daniel, and they have taken everything they can take from them. And when they got through taking everything they could take from them, then they began to pour into them, began to pour into their lives. And they're pouring into them uh, not good stuff. They're pouring into them the stuff of demons and devils and, and of the kingdom of Babylon. So Babylon is very pertinent when we look in the book of Daniel because Babylon is, is on the earth today. It has been established. When we think about Babylon, we're talking about a Babylonian system, a Babylonian system of government. And, and we know that that has been orchestrated upon the planet today in a major, major way. So this, this young man, young man who Daniel talks about, he did not want to, he did not want to defile himself. Daniel nor his three friends. They did not want to defile themselves with the king's meat, nor with his wine which he drank. So they made a request to the prince of the eunuchs that he might not defile himself. Now he says, Now I don't just just test me out for ten days. And this is chapter this chapter chapter one. Test me out for ten days and see how we look. Because he was he was afraid. The guard was the captain of the guard. He was afraid because if it didn't work, it meant that his his head would be decapitated, be decapitated from his body. So he wanted to make sure that everything were where it needed to be. Stay tuned for more of Frank Stewart. And now for some special announcements. Thanks for partnering with the Axe Ministries. We value your service and your donations. That's why we've made it easy to make contributions to support our ministry. Simply go to your web browser and click the search bar and type in axeministriesonline.org. Then click Donate Online. It's really that easy. For mobile giving, text the amount you wish to donate to 501-302-4242. That's Simple Give. And now, more of Pastor Frank Stewart. So Daniel refused to eat from the king's table and to drink the king's wine. But the Bible says something that at the end of 10 days, they appeared, they appeared to look better. They had fair, flatter, fatter in the, in the flesh than all the children which did not eat the king's portion. So we see God gives them a, a miracle just in the midst of digesting only vegetables because they did not want to co corrupt or pollute themselves with the king's meat because this is the Old Testament. So we see Shinar in Genesis, the Tower of Babel, Bill in Babylon. We see Shinar in the book of Daniel, and we see it in the book of Revelation. And there is a connection, and a connection is the book or is Babylon Babylon so Daniel moves right into prophecy when he get to Babylon he moves right into prophecy moves into a very elite position God opens all those doors because in this wicked world that they were living in yet and still those that were in control or had influence were those who believed in God those who trust in God they had influence. And that's what the Bible says. 
during the last days that my people they will they will do exploits. So it's our time to do exploits. It's our time to move into that dimension where we are what God says we are. Beloved, what manner of love has the Father bestowed upon us that we should be called the sons of God? So it's time for us to take our roles as the son of God. This is this is this is the book of Daniel. Incredible book. Incredible book for that time, incredible book for the latter time. We're dealing with we're dealing with prophecy. And Daniel, a young man that was taken into into Babylon and he was he was he was castrated, everything taken from him as far as the family and so on. He was removed to a isolated location and had to go through a vigorous training program for three years to be able to serve. So when it was told him that the king was upset and that the king said that he was going to destroy every wise man in Babylon. So they were all terrified. They was all upset. Little did they know that God already had Daniel on it. Daniel was already on it. What can we do? What can we say to make this life better? So Daniel's already on it. He's he's already working it. He's already working it. So with 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 this in mind, the book of Daniel is going to be an incredible book. It is a book where we see uh, the head of gold and the breasts and arms of silver, the belly and the thighs of brass, legs of iron, feet part of iron and part of clay. We see the different we see the different kingdoms that had lived or existed on the planet, world kingdoms that had existed. So this is now being revealed to Daniel. So he can share with the king. The Bible teaches us that the heart of the king is in the hands of the Lord. It is as the rivers of waters. He turns it whithersoever way he pleases. So God was using Daniel to tell him what was getting ready to happen uh, in the time of the Babylonians. But he was pushing and pointing them to what was going to happen during the end time, the end time. So that's why he gave him the the head of gold and the breast and arm of silver, the belly and the thighs of brass, legs of iron and feet, part clay and part iron. So God gives this incredible knowledge to Daniel and what was happening. And we know about those world powers. And even today we see the the world power in this world is America and we have to pay attention to that. So God has given us prophecy, and he's marked it throughout the word of God so we can read it, understand it, and make the proper adjustments. The Bible says that he will tell us what is going to happen. Jesus said, I'm going to tell you what's going to happen before it happens, so when it does happen, you will believe in me. And that's what we call prophecy. Prophecy teaching and explaining what is getting ready to happen before it happens. For mobile giving, text the amount you wish to donate to 501-302-4242. The Axe Church in North Little Rock is located at 1224 Franklin Street. For more information, go to axeministriesonline.org or give us a call at 501-329-2055. Thank you for tuning in to the Axe Ministry Podcast. The Axe Church is located at 1423 Indian Street in Conway and 1224 Franklin Street in North Little Rock, Arkansas. Tune in each day to hear an inspiring word from Pastor Frank.